Welcome back to Jacked In. It is 3.34, and as promised, I have Dieter Stottinger on the phone. Uh, and, you know, all I said was Antarctica and Dieter, and it's just you have to take the rest away here, Dieter, because you have done something that I just think is so amazing. First of all, thank you for joining me. Oh, you're welcome, Jessica. Thank you for having me on the show. Um so let's well, start off, yeah, like, okay, first of all, exactly what did you do? Well, our, our expedition was a two-man expedition, um, and the idea was to start at the very edge of Antarctica on the shelf ice mm-hmm. and open up a new uh, route to the South Pole. That was the intended <laughs> expedition. Wow, that seems pretty lofty, a new route to the South Pole. <laughs> I can tell you it, uh, it felt pretty... Pretty overwhelming in the beginning, really, because um, I can't say that I have ever done an expedition like this before. Yeah, and and, and why Antarctica? Why Antarctica? I mean, have you been always fascinated by that region, or um, in a way, but more from a mystical and mythological perspective? You mm-hmm. know, Antarctica wasn't officially discovered actually until like 1820, and um, the ancient Egyptians and the Greeks. They talked about a mysterious continent, and you know, Plato was the first one to um, tie the legend of Atlantis to this mythical land covered in ice. So that's really where my fascination with the continent has been. Mm-hmm. Um, not really in going there and being in the middle of nowhere on skis and with a kite. Mm-hmm. 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 So, uh, and exactly how long was the trip when we're talking about? kilometers and also days okay well um originally the distance um that we prepared for was three thousand kilometers Mm -hmm. in a a window of time for about three months Mm -hmm. and uh because that's actually the only time you can get in and out of antarctica yeah i bet weather played a big factor absolutely actually it was the weather that uh cut our trip a little short um, in the end, we managed to do 600 kilometers and in about one month. So we were in Antarctica from the beginning of November to the beginning of December. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reason for that is, you know, that very large distance that I told you about, mm-hmm. our expedition was based and reliant upon um, catabatic winds that flow from the glacier ice cap down to the... Uh, edge of the continent, mm-hmm. and we had hoped to use these winds for our kites. Um, but uh, we pretty soon discovered that even though, you know, scientists had said, well, these winds are very stable, um, that the conditions where we actually went were nothing like what the scientists had expected them to be, So, and we had ex- expected them to be. Right. Um, so we ended up man-hauling, um, a lot more than we had actually originally intended. And that's why, in the end, we couldn't reach our resupply depot. Um, And in the end, we had to make a decision to get out while it was still possible without becoming a search and rescue um, (laughs) case. Yeah, exactly. Dieter Stottinger is speaking. He uh, trekked across uh, part of Antarctica, and we're just on the line with him. Now, if you're listening and and you're intrigued by this story, as I was when I first heard about it, go on to his website, aloha-antarctica.com. So, Dieter, so you were really relying, let's talk about these kites. I mean, what what were they like? They must have obviously very specialized. Um, yes, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, only one person in the world makes them, and uh, he lives in Wales, and I had the opportunity to meet him because I had to learn how to fly a kite. Um, I'd never done this before. So basically it is a little bit like sailing, um, except you have 200 feet lines, so the kite is high up in the air, and we had skis especially um, prepared for the kiting, and we had our sleds. Um, which weighed about 125 kilograms mm-hmm. each, um, tied behind us. Oh, wow. So that's what you have to envision uh, when you see us going across the 
vast emptiness of Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a pretty great vision. And, and when you're talking about that weight, uh, yeah. and, and that's not, and I'm just judging from you, you said you didn't, you couldn't make the resupply station. Mm-hmm. That's not including food or anything or extra food or anything like that. Well, we had, we had anticipated um, to cover the 1,300 kilometers to the supply depot mm-hmm. in about um, 40 days maximum. Um, with, you know, that would have kind of given us about a 30 kilometer a day um, uh, limit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's just no way that you can uh, haul a 125 kilogram sled from 40 meters above sea level up to 2,600 meters yeah. uh, onto the glacier and, and still maintain 30 kilometers a day without kiting winds. And the further we got in land, the more the conditions um, were very different from what um, from what we expected. I'll give you a great little example. Mm-hmm. We had uh, meteorolo- meteorologists um, that every day by a satellite phone sent us a little forecast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and not unlike here in Canada, it was very often not correct. But this <laughs> one particular day, mm-hmm. uh, we had this forecast in the morning and said, Blue sky, light winds from the north. Remember, we're going south. That's mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. And unlimited visibility. Now, when we started, we had fairly strong winds from the south and almost but not quite whiteout conditions. We thought, well, maybe it clears up. About three hours into the day, we struggled to get our tent up because we were in this massive storm system coming from the south. Um, and we could barely manage to get the tent up, and even within the tent, we were quite worried that we would actually be blown away. Oh, um, I bet. The, the winds were that strong. Um, it was just, you know, and we actually called our meteorologist via the satellite phone, <laughs> and he looked at his computer model, uh-huh. actually three different models, and they all said, blue sky, oh, light geez. winds from the north. <laughs> and you're like, uh, we're here, it doesn't no. look like that. <laughs> Peter Stoddinger, yeah, no. he, he... So that just kind of like gives you an idea with the, the conditions that, uh, you know, sometimes we had to contend with. Um, no kidding. Dieter, yeah. Dieter Stoddinger speaking, and he did a trek across Antarctica. Now, we, we, didn't, we should have said this right off the top. You kept saying we. Who did you go with? Um, actually, the person who really um, had the idea to go there in the first place, my friend and partner, Armin Witt, mm-hmm. is... Uh, He's uh, my friend from Germany, and he came really up with the idea about a year ago. Called me um, in last January and said, "How do you like going to Antarctica?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, I hadn't really um, spoken with him in months, um, and never about Antarctica, so it came as a complete surprise. But uh, yeah. in the end, it really came down to three reasons why I decided. Um, to go and the first one was the you know I knew right off the bat that in my heart this was an opportunity of a lifetime no kidding and um, yeah go ahead so I just want to say so he, he approached you a year ago so you had a year to prepare so it must have been some heavy-duty training yes um, you know this is uh, such an extreme environment so uh, physically you know it, it meant gym time four to five times a week running cycling skiing uh, skiking which is kind of like um, rollerblading, but Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little different. You do it with uh, poles. And, of course, like I said before, learning how to fly a kite. Um, And not to forget, really, the the mental, spiritual preparation of being in isolation and, and more or less, you know, alone for Mm -hmm. such a length of time. Dieter, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, if you don't mind to hang on, because I do want to get into that and talking about, you know, you set out uh, to uh, trek across 3,000 kilometers and you did 600. So I want to know if you're going back, but hold that thought. We got to have a quick break. Absolutely. 